in this past year, 2016, the Jewish family lost many precious souls. Some of them household names, many less well known, yet each of them made special contributions of their own and touched the lives of many of us. And so as we close out the year together, we pay tribute in a moment of sacred memory. Rabbi Ronald Greenwald, who worked to help free Soviet refusenik Natan Sharansky and was President Nixon's liaison to the Jewish community. Rabbi Yochanan Sofer, who helped the Jews of Hungary make Aliyah, where he founded Yeshiva and a new community in Jerusalem that became home to many survivors of the Shoah. Rabbi Ben Zion Gold, who was the only member of his family to survive the Holocaust in Poland and who served as Harvard's Hillel Rabbi for 42 years. Rabbi Morton Leifman, a former vice president of the Jewish Theological Seminary and longtime dean of its Cantor's Institute, who was one of the first rabbis to travel behind the Iron Curtain to meet with Jews of Eastern Europe. Rabbi Max Tichten, a leader in the Hillel movement, who later taught in the Judaic Studies Department of George Washington University. And upon his retirement, they established the Max Tichten Professorship of Israel Studies. Rabbi Chaim Yisroel Belsky, who received his smicha in 1965 from the great American halachic decisor, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, and went on to become a senior halachic consultant for the Orthodox Union. Rabbi Maurice Lamb, a major figure in the American Orthodox rabbinate for more than 30 years, who authored the classic, The Jewish Way in Death and Mourning. Rebetzin Esther Youngrice, a pioneer of the Jewish outreach movement and founder of the organization Hineni, dedicated to bringing young Jews closer to Orthodox Judaism. A child survivor of Bergen-Belsen, Young Rice was named Woman of the Year by Hadassah, Jewish War Veterans, B'nai B'rith Federation of Jewish Women's Organizations. Jacob Neusner, one of the most influential voices in American Jewish intellectual life in the past 50 years, and one of the most published authors in history, having written or edited more than 950 books often related to rabbinic literature, especially the Midrash. Rabbi Eugene B. Borowitz, the preeminent Reformed Jewish theologian of his time and a major influence on a generation of Reformed rabbis who studied with him at the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion in New York City. The author and editor of 17 books he was also the founder of Shema Magazine, through which Borowitz created an unprecedented forum that brought Jews from every sector of the Jewish community together for a bi-weekly exchange of ideas and opinions in a publication known as a Journal of Jewish Responsibility. An academic of the highest caliber, Dr. Borowitz was the only Jew to serve as president of the American Theological Society. And in 1982, Harvard University Divinity School invited him to inaugurate its newly established List Professorship of Jewish Studies. And I am honored that Dr. Borowitz was my mentor and for choosing me to be the first assistant to the editor of Shema Magazine, which ultimately served as the model for the radio and then the later television version of L'Chaim. Known for his brilliant presentations of such Jewish theological and philosophical giants as Mordechai Kaplan, Abraham Heschel, and Martin Buber, Jean Borowitz was also a clarion voice articulating the reality of God in the language of Buber's I and Thou. Jean Borowitz, is God 
real. Yes, there is a God who is independent of me and has been and will be, yes. Goldie Michelson, who died at the age of 113 and 11 months, having lived most of her life in Worcester, Massachusetts, where she worked as a social worker. Judith Kay, the first woman to serve as chief judge for New York State's highest court, gaining a national reputation for her innovative reforms of the New York City court system. Stanley Scheinbaum, a liberal activist for nearly 70 years who fought for divestment from South Africa and helped defend Daniel Ellsberg of the Pentagon Papers. Jack Greenberg, an American lawyer and legal scholar who served as director counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, where he was involved in numerous crucial cases, including Brown v. Board of Education. John Gutfreund, who served as CEO of Solomon Brothers and started a trend in Wall Street investment companies when he took the partnership public. At a time of excesses, Gutfreund was known as the King of Wall Street. John Tishman, a real estate developer who transformed the skyline of several major American cities by building the World Trade Center in Madison Square Garden in New York, the John Hancock Center skyscraper in Chicago, Century City in Los Angeles, and Epcot Theme Park at Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Jack Rudin, a New York City real estate developer who served on the boards of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and Jazz at Lincoln Center. Jack received the Chevalier Award of the French Legion of Honor and was presented with an award medal by Pope Benedict XVI. Benjamin Gilman, a Republican congressman from New York who for more than 30 years was a strong pro-Israel voice in Congress. Simon Ramo, an aerospace pioneer and father of America's intercontinental ballistic missile system. John W. Kahn, an American scientist and recipient of the 1998 National Medal of Science. A professor at MIT, Kahn was one of the foremost authorities on thermodynamics. Solomon Golem, whose pioneering work in communication technology helped start the digital communications revolution, for which he received the National Medal of Science from President Barack Obama in 2004. Walter Cohn, who won the 1998 Nobel Prize in Chemistry with British-born scientist John People in 1998 for research explaining complex chemical reactions. Marvin Minsky, an American cognitive scientist concerned with research of artificial intelligence and co-founder of the AI Laboratory at MIT. Dr. Robert Berger, a Holocaust survivor who became director of an American clinical research center that challenged the continuing medical research on hundreds of prisoners at Dachau. Dr. Henry Heimlich, the thoracic surgeon whose Heimlich maneuver has saved thousands of people from choking to death. Joseph Scheer, a Holocaust survivor who became a New Orleans tailor for such celebrity clients as Fats Domino and Elvis Presley. Samuel Willenberg, the leader and last survivor of the Treblinka camp revolt of August 1943, in which 100 escapees survived. Willenberg later joined the Polish partisans and took part in the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. He moved to Israel in 1950 and spent the rest of his life teaching about the Holocaust. Hedy Epstein, a Holocaust survivor who escaped Germany on a kinder transport to England and became a renowned advocate for human and civil rights. Ernest Ernie Michel, 
and elegant and most beloved leader of American Jewry, who spearheaded the historic merger of UJA and Federation, and then served UJA Federation of New York for more than 60 years. In that position, Ernie was able to convince the Mormon Church to abandon their practice of posthumously baptizing Jews who had died in the Holocaust. Himself a survivor of Kristallnacht and of Auschwitz, Ernie served as chairman of the World Gathering of Jewish Holocaust Survivors in Jerusalem in 1981. And Ernie Michel was very kind to me and appeared multiple times on L'Chaim. Were you angry? I was scared. More than angry, I was scared. We tried, my parents tried to get me out of Germany. Baron George Weidenfeld, a British publisher and newspaper columnist who used his connections with popes, prime ministers, and presidents for diplomatic and philanthropic aid to Israel. Esther Hurlitz, an Israeli diplomat and politician who served as Israel's first female ambassador, ambassador to Denmark, and served as consul in New York in the 1950s, helping to build the American-Jewish relationship with Israel. Major General Avigdor Yanush Bengal, a Yom Kippur war hero credited with holding Syria at bay during the 1973 Yom Kippur War. After his service in the IDF, Bengal served as chairman of Israel's aircraft industries. Miriam Eshkol, the widow of Israel's third prime minister, Levi Eshkol, during the Six-Day War of 1967. Miriam helped establish Beit HaLochem, the National Center for Disabled IDF Veterans, and was the founding president of the Jewish Arab Friendship League. Mayor Dagan, who had a long and prestigious career in Israeli intelligence, serving for 10 years as head of the Mossad, a fervent advocate of peace with the Palestinians through a two-state solution, Dagan was an outspoken and controversial figure on the Israeli scene. Abe Siegel, a South African tennis legend who partnered with Gordon Forbes to become one of the best double teams in tennis history. Daniel Aaron, who helped design the multidisciplinary academic field of American studies that combined literature, history, politics, sociology, anthropology, art history, and other fields. Bob Edelman, a renowned photographer who captured the racial strife during the 1960s, most notably intimate portraits of Martin Luther King Jr. that included his I Have a Dream speech and the Selma Freedom March. Greta Zimmer Friedman, the 20-year-old dental assistant wearing a nurse's uniform immortalized in the iconic photograph of an ecstatic sailor kissing an unidentified woman wearing a nurse's uniform in a Times Square celebration of VJ Day, marking the Japanese surrender that ended World War II. Sonia Raikiel, a French fashion designer known as the Queen of Knitwear for her relaxed style of clothing that liberated women from stuffy suits. Leon Charney, a lawyer and real estate mogul who also served as a behind-the-scenes advisor to Jimmy Carter during the Oslo process and helped to facilitate back-channel negotiations between Israel and Egypt that led to Israel's peace treaty with Egypt. Leon Charney was also the longtime host of his own television program, The Leon Charney Report. Morley Safer, the award-winning correspondent who worked for 60 Minutes for 46 years, winning 12 Emmy Awards and numerous other journalism awards. His television reportage of the Vietnam War helped turn American public opinion against the war. Ruth Gruber, an historical icon of American Jewry, who spent a remarkable career as a journalist, 
photographer, writer, humanitarian, and the United States government official. Ruth Gruber documented the plight of Jewish refugees aboard the infamous ship, the Exodus, which was intercepted by the British on its way to Palestine in 1947. Ruth authored 19 books based on her personal experiences and shared some of her extraordinary life with me on L'chaim. I knew a little about the Holocaust and I began to fight. Imri Kertes, a Holocaust survivor and the first Hungarian to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature for such works as Faithless and Kaddish for an Unborn Child. Ronit Elkabetz, a spellbinding Israeli actress and director who won three Ophir Awards, the Israeli equivalent of an Oscar. Irving Fields, an American composer, pianist, and lounge music artist who was born Yitzhak Schwartz and is best known for Latinizing Yiddish songs like Raisins and Almonds and My Yiddish Mama into cha-chas and mambos. Arthur Hiller, a Canadian-born Jewish film director, most famous for the hit movie Love Story, for which he won a Golden Globe, as well as the comedy film hit Silver Streak, starring Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor, and for the World War II love story, the Americanization of Emily. Stephen Hill, best known for playing a Jewish Manhattan DA on the hit TV series Law and Order. He's also known for being a member of the original cast of Mission Impossible. A deeply observant Orthodox Jew, Stephen Hill refused to work on Shabbat, a decision which essentially ended his stage career. Abe Vigoda, an actor best known for playing a cranky police detective in the 1970s sitcom Barney Miller and for his portrayal of mobster Salvatore in The Godfather. Gary Shandling, a beloved stand-up comedian, actor, director, writer, and producer, best known for his work on The Larry Sanders Show. Shandling was nominated for 19 Primetime Emmy Awards and for two Golden Globe Awards. Doris Roberts, an American actress, author, and philanthropist, best known for her role on the CBS sitcom Everybody Loves Raymond. During her illustrious career, Doris won five Emmy Awards and a Screen Actors Guild Award. Leonard Cohen, the brilliant Canadian-born poet, novelist, singer, and songwriter, whose Jewish-infused music spanned nearly five decades. Cohn will ever be known for his majestic ballad, Hallelujah. Five-ish Finkel, the beloved actor to come out of the Yiddish theater and go on to perform on Broadway in Fiddler on the Roof, Little Shop of Horrors, and the New York Shakespeare Festival revival of Café Crow, for which Five-ish won an Obie Award. Five-ish Finkel was twice nominated for an Emmy for his role on Picket Fences, and had a recurring role in the TV series, Boston Public. And on JBS, Fivish Finkel shared the story of his life before lighting the menorah on the fifth night of Hanukkah. I am Jewish, and I remain Jewish, and I love being Jewish. I let the whole world know that I'm, that I'm Jewish. Gene Wilder, an American film icon, and a wildly talented comic actor, screenwriter, film director, and author. Born Jerome Silverman, and known for his frizzy hair and outrageous comedic talent, Wilder teamed with Mel Brooks to create some of the best-known films of the 20th century, including his first major film, The Producers, then Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein. He is also well-known and beloved for his portrayal of the title role in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and for his multiple films with Richard Pryor. Married to another comedic genius, Gilda Radner, Gene Wilder received two Oscar nominations and won an Emmy for his guest appearance on an episode of Will and Grace. 
Shimon Peres, a giant of Jewish history and the last of the founding father's generation of the State of Israel, who served the State of Israel for more than 50 years in public life as Israeli prime minister three times, foreign minister three times, and at the end of his illustrious public career for seven terms as president of Israel, where he became the face of the Jewish state. Perez is also credited for negotiating with the French for the technology needed to produce Israel's own nuclear program. A tenacious advocate of peace with the Palestinians, Perez is a co-recipient with Yitzhak Rabin and Yasser Arafat of the 1994 Nobel Peace Prize for the Oslo process. In 2012, President Obama presented Perez with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, and in 2014, Perez received the Congressional Gold Medal. He retired from politics in 2014 at the age of 91 and devoted the rest of his life to the Perez Center for Peace, an organization devoted to building better ties between Israelis and Palestinians. And Elie Wiesel, the moral conscience of the world who became the universal rabbi, teaching all of us born after World War II the meaning and significance of the Shoah and the responsibility which every Jew carries to speak out in defense of any and every injustice anywhere in the world, while always maintaining a transcendent concern for the welfare, well-being, and survival of the Jewish people and the Jewish state. A survivor of Auschwitz, Elie Wiesel became one of world Jewry's most prolific and eloquent novelists, beginning with his powerful autobiography, Night. Elie Wiesel was one of the first to spark awareness of the plight of Soviet Jewry in his landmark work, Jews of Silence, and was the founding chairman of the United States Holocaust Memorial Council, appointed in 1980, which created the United States Holocaust Museum in our nation's capital. Elie Wiesel spent 40 years teaching students at Boston University and was also a master at weaving the legends of the Jewish tradition, Midrash, into a jewel of Jewish insight and understanding of rabbinic Judaism. Elie Wiesel authored more than 50 books while becoming an international voice for peace and reconciliation for which he received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1986. And in so many crucial ways, Elie Wiesel had a profound personal influence on me, as he did on virtually everyone who knew him. He taught me that the answer to a friend's request is not yes, but of course. And whenever I asked Elie Wiesel to join me on Machayim, that was always his answer, of course. There were so many profound moments with him on Lachaim. Here is but one of them. He was the loneliest human beings in the world. He was abandoned by man and God. And uh, that night has not lifted. Something of the darkness remained in us. But it's up to us to turn it into light, into a flame, into a sacred flame. It's up to us, really, to, uh, to use the proper words, not as swords, but as prayers. Not as uh, poison, but as a, a promise, a promise of humanity, of redemption. Why not? Zecher Tzadikim Livracha, the memory of the righteous, is forever a blessing.
We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS, the Jewish Broadcasting Service, with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the JBS homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM, to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.